Good afternoon. I'm Mark Gerhardt. I'm a retired Colonel of Marines. Uh, I currently work for the federal government uh, in Warren uh, for the program manager's office for light armor vehicles. Um, I first of all want to thank Representative Riley and his staff uh, who've been enormously helpful. Uh, this is obviously a shock. Uh, Lucas has never been in trouble in his life. Uh, so to have charges like this lev levied against him for reasons that we couldn't explain uh, obviously was reeling to my family. Uh, Representative Riley and his staff were extremely helpful in, in helping us guide through the process in, uh, in na na navigating the, uh, the way to go about this properly. Um, I'm here to put this in some context. Uh, I don't have any prepared notes. Uh, I'm basically here to tell you a story of exactly how I saw it fall out. Um, and I'm still in a little bit of disbelief. This happened in August of last year. Uh, Lucas was getting ready to start his third year at Lake Superior State. Uh, Representative Riley mentioned that he was a law enforcement, uh, criminal justice law enforcement student uh, with very, very serious plans about becoming uh, a police officer or uh, involved in law enforcement in some way, form or fashion. A uh, very dedicated student, he's an Eagle Scout, uh, very active in the community, never been in trouble in his life, he has a totally clean record. Um, so leading up to this, he's going into his third year at the school that he had had previous run-ins, uh, political differences of opinions that normally happen. Uh, in Lucas's case, uh, he's a conservative, which uh, as you probably know is, is in the minority in most colleges campus, college campus environments nowadays, and, and I think in his case, uh, this is the same. Uh, he was fine with that. Lucas is still very vocal about it, held his beliefs, uh, was never vindictive about anything, was never antagonistic, uh, but he defended himself and his beliefs. Uh, Going through his third year, he was he was pretty optimistic that this was going to be a, a good year. Uh, he thought the past uh, issues he had, harassments uh, from other students, was going to be behind him, and uh, he was pretty excited about going to school and, and finishing up his last two years at Lake State and becoming a cop afterwards. So over the summer, Lucas worked at a restaurant um, and busted his tail. He washed dishes, bust tables, hosted, uh, saved up every penny he could save and he told me he wanted to buy a rifle. I had taken Lucas out to the range many times. I'm a retired Marine. I've been around weapons over 30 years. Uh, taught him how to shoot. He was very conscientious about it, very respectful, very safe with the weapon. I had no issues. So when he told me he wanted to buy a rifle, I'm like, all right, son, that's good. Lake State, uh, for those of you who don't know, is, is kind of an anomaly for campus life nowadays. They allow weapons to be stored on campus. Guns, bows, uh, crossbows, uh, there's an armory in the public safety building that you can uh, rent, or uh, sorry, it's free of charge to students, have a locker, uh, provide your own lock, and it's a double lock door where you go and you draw your weapon out and are able to go out shooting uh, at a range, go hunting, um, what have you. So there's a large trust factor there, but it's still a secure facility. So I told Lucas when he went to school, I'm sorry, let me backtrack. So he decides to buy a Colt AR-15 rifle. Uh, it is a A4 version, which is very similar to the rifle I carry uh, while my five deployments to combat zones. Uh, so Lucas had an affinity towards that as, as something, an attachment to me. Uh, he buys a rifle, takes it out, he enjoys it thoroughly, and is very excited about it. So the night before going up to school, he posts on his Snapchat what Representative Riley alluded to was the Snapchat post, but it was to a secure, closed group. It was the group that he considered friends and no expectations about anybody else seeing that particular post. As it so happened, the girl that got the uh, snap saw it and showed it to her friend who had been blocked by Lucas previously because of some earlier disputes, uh, some political arguments. Lucas uh, took the high road and basically just blocked her off of Snapchat and said, you know, we're just not gonna talk anymore. We're never gonna agree. So we'll just agree to disagree. Uh, this particular individual saw it, apparently took offense to it, and reported it to the residential uh, assistant supervisor. She herself was an RA, and, and the girl, that the person that actually got this, was also an RA. Um, the RA recommended they take it to public safety, which they did. Public safety recommended they report it to the police, which they did. Um, Lucas has no idea any of this is going on. So he arrives at the school the very next day. The first thing he does before he does anything else is takes the rifle and the ammunition 
it's a public safety, checks it in the locker, locks it up, and then goes and gets his room key and his building passes. And he thinks that's it. Goes to his room, a few hours later, he gets a knock on the door. It's public safety and Sault Ste. Marie police want to search his room, which he complies. He says, I'm fine with that, but what's, what's the reason? What's the purpose? And they tell him it's a terrorist charge, making terroristic threats. And when they tell him what constituted that, he asked them, you know, how can melting snowflakes possibly be a terroristic threat? And the opinion given to him by one of the officers was, well, you've seen the Wizard of Oz, correct? And, and Lucas said, I, I have. And the officer said, well, what happens to the Wicked Witch? He says, well, she has a bucket of water on her and she melts. He says, okay, so she melts, she died, right? And he said, yes. He says, that's what we're talking about. So unbelievably, it's a true story, the context for the charge was the Wicked Witch got melted in the Wizard of Oz, therefore you were, you were intention, your intention was uh, harming others. That's the way they're taking it. Um, and Lucas was in disbelief. They left the room. He asked what was going to happen. They said, well, we'll let you know in a couple of weeks if the prosecutor decides to charge. So Lucas calls me immediately. He's obviously concerned and upset. And uh, I live downstate near Rochester, um, about five hours away from Lake State. And I said, Lucas, if you want me to come up tonight, I can come up. You know, I just I want to give you some moral support. He's pretty shook up about it. And he said, yeah, Dad, that'd be cool if you, did, if you could. So I drove up. And uh, I got up there, he was in his room. We uh, went out, they have a thing called Laker Palooza, which is pretty cool. It's a campus-wide event. They've got outdoor movies and they've got games going on, all kinds of cool stuff. It's kind of a carnival, uh, pre-classes. Classes hadn't started yet. And so he hung out, did some of that stuff, walked around, went out to eat, went back to his room. And I said, Lucas, don't worry about this. You know what, this is it's gonna blow over. It's not a huge deal. You obviously didn't do anything wrong. If they didn't do anything afterward, after talking to you, then." I think you're going to be okay. Well, the next morning it wasn't okay. He got a knock on the door. I was, I actually stayed over uh, in his room. He had a single room and there were two Sault Ste. Marie police officers and a public safety officer there and took him into custody uh, under uh, 750.543M, uh, false repair, report of terrorism or making terroristic threats. I was in disbelief. I couldn't believe the prosecutor had actually decided <clears throat> to press charges, but, um, but she did or the assistant prosecutor, I should say. Uh, that to me was was upsetting, but was it was even more upsetting, quite honestly, is, is a Marine and a parent with a, with a child at school, it's what didn't happen if the school thought this was such a huge threat. In my eyes, if the school was that terrified of this one person making this threat, they would have called the state police and said, look, we have a potential threat coming up to school. Intercept him at the bridge. Take him into custody if you have to, but intercept him. We don't know what his intentions are, but you need, we need to stop him before he even gets into the UP. That's step one. Barring that, he gets to school, you have a forced presence on school. And, oh, by the way, why don't you let the campus know that there is a potential threat coming up. Put him into a, a lockdown condition, shelter in place, student body, don't leave your rooms, find a safe spot. We might have a threat coming up to school. Let, let them know that there might be something happening. Well, guess what? None of that happened. So in my mind, well, this is playing out in real time. The school wasn't seeing this as a, as a, a general public safety concern. Uh, it was only afterwards that they decided that they were, they were going to pursue this along with the prosecutor. Now, I don't know, I, I, can only, I won't even conjecture what the relationship between the prosecutorial team and the school is. Um, I can only tell you there's a blurry line there because I saw the school uh, leadership at just about every event I guess I would expect that since he, he was a student at the school, um, but at the same time, uh, it was concerning to me as well, to be honest. So with that, um, I can say that as a caveat to this, uh, it's now in circuit court, a district, we are a preliminary exam, and the, uh, the initial student that got this text, this snap, uh, made the statement under oath saying, look, when I saw this, I didn't see it as a threat, and I'm paraphrasing. But she didn't take it as a threat. It's when she showed it to her friend, who then took a picture of it with her, her camera that, that constituted that threat, according to the school and the prosecutor. So uh, Lucas spent 83, some day, 83 days in jail. I couldn't bond him out. Uh, the bond was excessive, which I would have met. However, they wouldn't allow him to be tethered outside of Chippewa County in the UP. Uh, 
I have no support structure up there. It would have been foolish for me to let him out of jail and sit there uh, with no support at all. And there's, there's absolutely no way that that could have happened. So uh, we finally got them to agree to allow him to be bonded out of the house. He's under house arrest right now. The restrictions are pretty withering for a 20 year old kid. Uh, he can't use a smartphone, he can't use the internet. Uh, he really can't do anything other than watch TV, talk on a landline, and, uh, and hope, hope this is a positive resolution. So with that, I can take a couple